Seasons change and so do landscapes, but one thing that won't, my love for the single offshoot in the Kiseki series so far. That is Naito no Kiseki, a game that was released by Nihon Falcom on the PSP back on July 26, 2012. Hi! Alright, so we're gonna take a quick gander at the Falcom series, particularly in the West. So, I don't know, Kiseki, Trails in the Sky, FC and SC have been released. The third is coming out in 2017. So, that that aside, we've got uh, a duology, Zero and Aono Kiseki, which takes place in Crossbell. Different area, different country in, in the whole setting of the Kiseki series. And unfortunately, they've been skipped and it hasn't been announced for any sort of release. Personally, those two games are my favorite and I would really like for people to get the, the opportunity to play them, but I, I, I don't make those decisions. Eh, maybe sometime down the road. But they were skipped and then they went to release Sen no Kiseki 1 and 2 or Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2. So, and people, people so far have really, really liked those two in particular. Personally, not my favorite, but... That, that's not what this is all about. So early on in this current decade, mainly looking at 2010 and 2013, Falcon was like not only releasing some fantastic games, but continued to build on the wonderful trilogy that was started with Trails in the Sky, which was what really catapulted Falcon in the last, you know, six years. Is this just, you, you've got Zeto and Aono Kiseki and... You uh, had E7 kind of come out, uh, you know, kind of <laughs> around there. But uh, the big thing were, were the Kiseki games. And in that that nice little bubble of time, a game came out that had the Kiseki title, but didn't have the AU Densetsu or the Legend of Heroes part. And that game is the game I'm talking about today, which is Naya Tenno Kiseki. This guide in Naya Tenno Kiseki wears trails and proudly continues to bolster Falcom's good name. With, with a good show. Now, where other Trails games are turn-based goodness, Naita aimed for action stages and platforming, away from Crossbell, Arbonian, and Liberal, on a different world, on an island referred to as, as the Remnant Island. Eh, it's kind of an island change, so Remnant Islands. The, in the Ciencia Sea, some people collect shards that fall to the world called Star Fragments, which displays another idyllic world called Lost Heaven. The player plays as Naita Herschel, now, that name may sound familiar for those of you who've played Trails of Cold Steel. Just throwing that out there. Not saying that there's any connection, but there may be a connection. And if there is, Falcon's alluded to it, but has never specifically said anything. I still hold out hope for that. <laughs> you play as Naya to Herschel, home for the holidays from school. With the help of Noi, these two must find a way to fix the problems plaguing Lost Heaven and also coming to learn of its mysteries and history in the process. The game plays much like a slower version of East, with stages like a Mario game, where you collect things throughout those stages and hit certain goals, such as beating the stage under a certain amount of time or only taking damage less than three times. And when you reach those goals and collect these things, you receive stamps and unlock new fighting so or like sword skills and items. You kill monsters or eat meals to gain experience points. And the eating meals part is it kind of makes the game a bit easier because you can go and just eat a bunch of things, collect the items throughout the stages that are dropped by enemies and such, and then just go back, go back home and eat a bunch of meals and then level up makes it a bit easier so <laughs> if you're trying to you gotta have willpower and not be like yeah i'm just gonna i'm gonna grind by eating food <laughs> you you level up and also you can uh, level up your magic by using it and certain magic spells require that you use it you know five times as opposed to some magic spells that require you to use it 20 times and then you can level up uh, three times to make them stronger and such and to use to use more of them there so, one very nifty aspect of the game is that different seasons affect stage layouts, monsters, and difficulties. And you are able to change the seasons uh, as the game progresses. So, it's not like you're having to wait and be like, Oh, okay, I've played a stage here and it was spring, so now it's going to be summer. Now, you can, once you get into the game more and more, you're able to unlock different seasons for the different areas and such. That said, it is a little bit of an easier game, but 
having harder difficulties as well as the kind of the seasonal changes and the extra little uh, they're not necessarily side goals but those extra little goals to unlock skills and everything kind of makes the game a little bit more challenging and in doing so you have to be a bit more focused. You can't just kind of lackadaisically go, I'm just gonna, gonna do the thing, and then, because uh, you can probably get away with that on normal, but if you try to play it on a harder setting, it might not end so well. So, uh, like, when you put it on harder difficulties, falling into chasms and pits and stuff, yeah, you don't instantly die, but it takes greater chunks of health and that sort of thing, so... It, it's not, yeah, I like the difficulty of it. It's not too arduous. It, would it be nicer to be a little bit more difficult? Yes. Uh, I think that would push it further into the East Territory, but uh, they, they didn't quite go that route. So it's it's kind of like, it's like East Light. <laughs> it's a good way to put it, both in gameplay and in difficulty. Quite possibly the greatest strength of Naya Tonokiseki, and really is probably no surprise to fans of Falcom, is that the soundtrack is just primo. <laughs> it's it's it is sublime. It's 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 pretty darn good. Now I'm going to sample some of it for you, and also give you the link. I, I want to say the channel's um, Falcom Music Channel, and they've got a bunch of different albums of Falcom games and such. If you're not going to play the game. I highly implore you to listen to the music. It's fantastic. This soundtrack doesn't pull punches, and I think the music fits well with building tension and anticipation with songs that sound almost like a rhythmic heartbeat, pounding during a strenuous endeavor. <laughs> or if you do a lot of like really, really hard workouts, yeah, that kind of that feeling of having your, your heart beat, you can feel it in your neck, that's kind of how I feel with that. But also it does a good job of uh, conveying emotional drain or simply emotionally trying moments that are there throughout the game is the writing and scenario writing able to capture all of this fantastically i would say no it but it does well it's not like ah oh, it's super amazing writing it's it's it, it's it's decent to good <laughs> right it is not like super crazy oh my goodness, this is going to make you think and it's going to be really, really insightful and all that sort of stuff. Not really. But I think it does a good job. And, you know, does it well. Does a good job. And that in tandem with the music really kind of strengthens the whole experience. 
Now, this game is honestly one of my favorites from Falcom. To me, it has the same sort of heart and mind that I get from Mega Man Legends. Uh, is the story... There are certain elements that are certainly similar to it. But um, when I play either of those... I guess three games, counting Mega Man Legends 2. But when I play either of those games, or any of those games, I get really giddy, like, like, a, like a child. And, you know, once I had the sense of wonder, and uh, then I lost it, became adult, and then I recaptured it playing it. <laughs> Something like that, you know? It's, it captures just a, a childlike quality, and it's not like it's it's a a groundbreaking game in any sort of way with the story the the music fantastic it certainly pushes that a bit or the or the gameplay it's just it's just one of those things where the the sum of its parts is greater than its whole there's this innately it, it appeals to me in in a very similar fashion that Mega Man Legends did when I had first played it as a kid. That to me always always it, it, it works. Plus, like the the main character Nayata has this I don't want to say affinity, but I don't want to say like fixation, but this this great interest in astronomy and stuff like that, and I I, I, I relate. I digs it, yeah. <laughs> but don't just take my word for it. Here's I know him as RPG Swagman, but he he has changed his name. I should I should try to remember that. <laughs> but uh, he is now referred to as Wanderer from the Past, and he's going to give his thoughts on the game. Hi everyone. I definitely concur with everything the good sir has said thus far. Naisha no Kiseki is a wonderful action RPG and it was a great way for the company to finish off their PSP development era. It's a unique action RPG that has the visual style of E7 with a gameplay system that harkens back to the older 2000 East games like Ark and Epistum, Open Folgana and East Origin. It's incredibly fun to play. The story is very charming. It's this wonderful tale of an alternate world where the seasons change. It's it's very colorful. It's very unique. It's very vibrant. I, I really enjoyed my time with Naito no Kiseki. And for anyone that is a PSP aficionado that still needs that PSP fix, I definitely recommend you go out there and get this any way you can. There is an English patch for this game that you can download. I do advise that you have a copy of the game that you can easily import from places like PlayAsia or, or you know, stores on eBay. No matter how you can find it, get it. It's a wonderful game. I highly recommend it. Thank you. Uh, if you want to check out his stuff, I'll send him a link. You, you probably, if you know either one of us, you probably know the other. Maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, he, he is a, a bit, bit well more known than I am. So <laughs> that said, he, he really, really puts a point that yes, you can play it. And if you are into the PSP, PSP is one of my favorite handhelds there. And if you, as well, I would recommend you find a way to get it. And as I had mentioned before, there is an English translation for it. Which is probably going to be one of the only ways to really play it. The, the Japanese isn't really, really, really difficult. And there are points in the game that does have voice acting, which isn't bad. It's, it's decent voice acting. But the thing is, it's not all the time. So if you have decent amount of Japanese reading skill, I'd say give it a try on that alone to see how well it works for you. And I mean decent. I'm not saying just knowing hiragana or katakana because you're, you're certainly going to need to know kanji because I don't think it has furigana, the little, little, little tiny characters about the kanji. I don't quite recall it having that in there. If you're feeling the taste for an action RPG platformer with some great music, I highly recommend this game. This game is it's great. Get it! I mean, yeah, find it by PlayAsia. I think Amazon Japan now sends internationally. You can get it, and or like I mentioned before, if you if you really like the soundtrack, buy the soundtrack. It's a fantastic soundtrack. I I imagine you can get it on iTunes. I've gotten a few different Falcon soundtracks off of iTunes. Uh, so, yeah, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this kind of review, little chat there for Naito no Kiseki for the PSP. Thanks for watching, listening, and all that sort of stuff, and have a good day.